What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to A Modern Nation. I'm all fired up today because we are talking about one of the hottest mods on my YouTube channel today. It's so hot, some people are saying it might even go up in flames. So I brought my own thermometer here and we're gonna check the temperature. We're turning up the heat on one of my coolest mods. <laughs> Shit, I'm all out of puns! Hey guys, I'm back. So I wasn't kidding when I said this is one of the hottest mods on my YouTube channel to date. This video now has over 38,000 views. You guys are phenomenal. Thank you so much for all the love and support. This mod was one of the best mods I've ever accomplished for my YouTube channel. And that's saying a lot because most of the mods I've done are pretty freaking cool. But not all of them went the way that I hoped that they would go. This was one of the few mods that actually worked out perfectly. And there was an outpouring of love from all of you about how great this mod was and you wanted me to do it for you or you wanted to try it yourself. But there were some of you that weren't so enthusiastic about it. I'm not adverse to YouTube trolls. I've seen it happen with other channels. Uh, some of you said that it looked like shit and okay, I guess that's fair. One of you even said it looked like Santa took snowy poops all over my motherboard and I have no idea where you came up with that. Some of you, however, were more concerned about the thermal temperatures. And rightfully so, because electronics do produce heat. And so when you protect that heat by insulating it, you do cause a lot of heat buildup that could damage electronics. Heat for electronics is bad. We know this because there are heat sinks all over the motherboard for parts that get hot, like the VRMs, for example, or the South Bridge. So this is what I wanted to address today. Some of you said that you were concerned that my motherboard was gonna overheat or that I was such an idiot because I painted over things that were going to explode. Well, I hate to tell you this, but I've been running this computer 24 hours a day for the last three months. I don't know, when did I put this video out? Three or four months ago. I've been gaming on it. I've been encoding videos on it. I've even been live streaming on it every Friday, which you should check out on Twitch. Uh, maybe I'm one of the lucky ones. Maybe my motherboard didn't uh, overheat because uh, I hit the silicone lottery and I'm doing really well with this motherboard. I don't know what the answer is, but I hope to find out that answer today and I'm gonna provide you guys with that information. So I'm using the Fleur One Pro thermal imaging camera camera and when the full review of that becomes available you'll see a card in the upper right hand corner. This camera is going to allow me to look at the thermal landscape of the motherboard as well as find out what the temperatures are on particular hot spots. It's going to let me know what parts are hotter than others and allow me to identify what parts could potentially overheat. So your question is, is plastic dipping the motherboard going to cause it to overheat? And my answer is, I don't know. It hasn't so far but I got this thermal camera here and today we're gonna answer that question. All right, so this is the setup that I've got going on. So we can see I've got my camera up on a tripod. I've removed the side panel from my case. You can see the motherboard, it's all painted up. I got the computers on. We are ready with X264. So we've got the Core i7-6700K. We are overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz at about a 1.42 voltage. Uh, GP, uh, CPU Z, excuse me, is reporting the voltage at 1.408. These are the idle temperatures. There's the temperature of the individual cores. Make note of the temperatures on the board and start. Processor temperatures are currently 57 to 70 degrees. As we go through our first loop, I'm gonna go ahead and take the camera off the tripod. We're gonna get in here real close and we'll see what we can see. It looks like the caps Caps might be about 48 Celsius. Let's see what's over here. Uh, there's a few caps in that area, 50 Celsius, 52, and climbing. 
Nope, looks like it stopped at 52. Let's take a look at the RAM. Some people are saying that uh, painting the motherboard RAM was causing it to heat up. Right now, the motherboard RAM is at 50 Celsius. So that doesn't seem to be an issue. Here was that inductor that I was telling you about. That is at 54. And there's a few caps up here, nothing too bad. All right, so hopefully this will help identify some of the more hot spots on the motherboard. If you're wondering what that is up on top there, that is actually the board used to power the LCD for my uh, Snowblind mod, uh, which you can check out in the card in the upper right corner. But we're gonna bring this down here. Okay, so we've got a spot right here. It's about 50. 53, 54 degrees, 53, 54. So there's an inductor right there. That inductor right there is probably related to the processor. Maybe providing some power. So let's see, we're gonna measure right here. Looks like we're getting 78. Huh, that's interesting, what is that? So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this back for a second. Oh, okay. So it looks like there is some caps in that corner right there that are getting pretty warm. Uh, looks like there's some heat here at the top, uh, which should be of no surprise. There's actually some capacitors right there. We'll flip off real quick. So you can see that those are capacitors right there. 61, 64. So those are heating up. I'm gonna come on down here. Uh, you're seeing another row of capacitors. These ones are about 70 Celsius. And then underneath here, there's a couple capacitors in this area right here. All right, well, that's exactly what we'd expect to see. The south bridge is about 62. Uh, those are the heat sinks for the south bridge. There's another section of capacitors over here, but it doesn't look like they're anywhere. 57, 56. So it looks like the capacitors and the inductors, well, one inductor, are heating up. But it looks like none of these are getting above, say, 70 Celsius. And a lot of these components are rated for uh, at least 105 Celsius. So I'd say we're still within the safe range. Now, granted, we're not gonna be running the computer at 100% all the time. So is this a realistic test? No, of course not. I decided that to prove my point, I was gonna push the computer just a little bit harder to show you that nothing is overheating. Nothing is outside of extreme tolerances. I'd say this was a pretty successful test and uh, I think we could probably end it here. Buildzoid from Actually Hardcore Overclocking did a walkthrough on his liquid nitrogen test bench where he discussed covering the motherboard with Plasti Dip. Click on the card in the upper right corner to watch the video. So now that we have our answers, it's time to reach out to Asus and Performix. So Asus is the manufacturer of my motherboard and Performix is the manufacturer of PlastiDip. So I did what any average Asus customer would do. I went to their customer support board and I talked to a representative who wasn't able to answer my question, but he did escalate my case up and I did get a response from Asus. So the email says, hello, Chris. Hi. Thank you for contacting Asus Product Support. My name is Eugene Dean. It's my pleasure to help you with your case. We have reviewed your escalation. We are happy to assist you with your query. We are pleased to advise you that the capacitors are 10K black capacitors, but we do not know the temperature for them. So that was not very helpful. What is helpful is the fact that they are black capacitors and they are rated at 10K. Going on the ASUS website, I discovered that ASUS uses uh, Nikon or Ni Nikon. 
I am not sure how to pronounce it, but they are a very high-end capacitor. And if we assume that Nikon or Nikon capacitors are being used for the motherboard, these capacitors are rated at 105 degrees Celsius, which means that that is the temperature that they are able to withstand continuous operation. So as long as we are below 105 degrees Celsius, the product should operate okay. Some people in the comment section have expressed concern about the BIOS chip, which is a WID band 25Q, well you get the idea. The BIOS chip has an operating temperature of negative 40 to 85 degrees C, which means that if it was above its operating temperature, we would have seen it on the camera. And don't even worry about this Digi Plus EPU VRM controller because that was covered by the tape when I originally painted the board. The next thing to do was to contact Performix, the maker of PlastiDip, to find out about the insulating properties of PlastiDip. And I received a response from them. It says, good morning, Chris. PlastiDip does not have insulating properties. However, we do not have measurements of these insulating properties. It can be used on electrical applications and has a dielectric strength of 1400 volts per mil. I have attached a technical data sheet on PlastiDip for your review. Please let me know if you have any further questions. Thank you, Tiffany Werner, Customer Service Technical Support, PlastiDip International. So that's it. I mean, we we don't really know if PlastiDip has insulating properties. My guess is no, it doesn't, simply because you're able to measure the temperature through the PlastiDip. If it had insulating properties, we would probably see a significant drop in temperature, which we haven't. But the fact that we're able to measure the heat through the PlastiDip itself suggests that those insulating properties are not quite there. I don't know, maybe my interpretation of that is wrong. Maybe PlastiDip is the best insulator of all time, uh, better than fiberglass. You know what, maybe I am burning up my motherboard slowly and I don't even realize it. All that I can tell you is that I can continue to monitor the performance of my motherboard and let you know if anything changes. And if suddenly I stop producing YouTube videos, it's probably because my computer died. So there you go guys, you'll have to form your own conclusions based upon the data and information that I presented to you today. Whether you think PlastiDip is safe or not, regardless of whether PlastiDip is safe or not, any sort of modding or modification to electronics or otherwise comes with its own risks. A risk of eliminating your warranty, irreparable damage. Things don't always work out the way that you anticipate when you are modding. So always keep that in mind whenever you take on a modding project. Uh, it's time to get going guys. I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you enjoyed watching this video, make sure you hit the like button below and share the video. Join the modern nation and get subscribed today by clicking on the subscribe button below. And when you click on the subscribe button, make sure you click on the bell icon inside of the subscribe button to be notified the moment that I release new YouTube videos. I'm releasing new YouTube videos every week and I know the past couple weeks have been really slow. I'm trying to work on getting more video content out to you guys. Thank you for being patient and thank you for being a big support. Leave me a comment down in the comment section and let me know what do you think about plastic dipping a motherboard? Has this video encouraged you to plastic dip your motherboard or has it kind of scared you away from doing that? If you have any other comments or questions for me, you can leave them for me in the comment section below. And as always, you can reach me on social media. I'm available via Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can catch me streaming every Friday and Saturday evening. On Fridays, you can catch me streaming on Twitch and YouTube. And on Saturdays, I stream with Filthy Icon exclusively on Twitch. Also, when you buy products from Amazon, consider supporting this channel by using my Amazon affiliate link in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't seen me Plasti Dip a motherboard before, you can watch it by clicking on the video up here. Uh, and as always, I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.